हेलो एंड वेलकम टू हाउ टू सिटीजन सीजन टू आई एम मेघनाथ योर होस्ट इन केस दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम यू आर लिस्निंग टू दिस पॉडकास्ट दिस इज अ पॉडकास्ट दैट आई डू विथ माई को होस्ट Shreyas, uh, that's my name. The last time I checked. Uh, welcome to season two. We thought we would not pass after season one. Uh, we got the results. We got the evaluation, and we have passed, not with flying colors by grace marks, but we have passed. We yes. have made it. Yes. And uh, we are graduating from the eighth standard civics textbook to seventh standard. Seventh, because we are regressing. We are not. Society is regressing. Society is so okay, we yeah. are also regressing. Okay, you're blaming it on the society. But I feel like that's a graduation because uh, we are getting into more basic civics. In case this is the first time you are listening to this podcast, Shreyas will explain it to you. This podcast involves us inviting fun guests who bring their different lenses to this, and we look at the chapters of the seven standard civics textbook. uh and these people's experiences they bring in those experiences and how they align or don't align with the things mentioned in the chapter we also see how this chapter does in relation to reality what we see around us whether it is what it says it is whether it's not uh, these are just some of the things that we find out uh i know you didn't study enough in your civics classes when you were in a classroom this is your chance to make up for it you can download the chapter you can watch along you can underline all the things you need to underline and have questions for us as well the format of this podcast is that we assign one chapter of the 7th grade civics book to a guest 24 hours before the recording and then they cram it they cram the hell out of it and then they come here and we discuss it with them and we discuss it and i will be honest they have there are going to be some powerful guests on this season who have tried everything that they can to get the question paper before but uh, the security is very strong it's tight speaking of powerful guests this is chapter 1 of how to citizen and in this chapter we got omar abdullah right now you're seeing us in the studio but we actually went to kashmir guys we went to his house we went to his we crossed his five layers of security yep we did some very brave things in kashmir to get you this episode so you better like it on equality is the title of the chapter we speak to omar about how equal he feels yep or what does voting even mean what does government even mean what does government me i don't know i don't know any more shreyas this is where we are but what omar tells us is very interesting we talked to him about his experiences in government mm-hmm. and also his experiences implementing policies that that ensure equality yeah because he was a actual chief minister at one point correct so enjoy this episode from kashmir, kashmir. Hello and welcome to season two of How to Citizen. Season two. Season two. Yeah. We are here. We are here. We are Where here. Where are we? Where I still can't believe it. Yeah, we are in Kashmir and the lights are already flickering. <laughs> oh, this has become an illegal. <laughs> it's What a is sign, happening, guys. It's a sign. Yeah. They, or maybe the gods are blessing. Yeah. Us, yeah. Which yeah. Is great. But welcome to season two of How to Citizen. I know you guys have missed me and therefore I have changed companies. <laughs> for you <laughs> so that i can do this again and uh, because i have changed companies mm-hmm. yeah we decided to have like a very very special guest for the first episode hello omar hi hi uh, can we call you omar by the way what else were you thinking of calling me no because uh, we were think we were debating this for half an hour right <laughs> uh, should we call him well, omar <laughs> <laughs> you guys really are nothing better <laughs> Listen, we were in Kashmir. We were on a we were on a shikara. Sitting on a shikara. Yeah, we were. What do we call him? <laughs> Let's ignore the mountains. Ignore the lake. Let's just decide. Because we had we had our chapters in our hands. Yeah. We were preparing yesterday on a shikara also. Okay. So, the, but the thing is, uh, do you have like reverential followers? Which would get offended if we call no. you Af- Omar? No, no, right? Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I feel uh, it's you are uh, accessible. to everyone at least that's what the well, public feels a lot of people feels. will think otherwise but right, i'd like yeah. to believe i am right yeah. yeah i mean we made it here you let us inside here that's pretty accessible yeah, yeah. <laughs> i texted you and you said yes so yes. that's great <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're right uh, not many people get that yeah but uh, i can be really hard to get if i want to be 
Oh. I can, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> kind of, you know, deserve it also, I guess. But, uh, but like, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, what did you, did you even read the chapter? Did you get? Time? I did. You did. Yeah, yeah. I had huh? Performance anxiety. <laughs> I, I really wanted to make sure I knew what I was getting myself in for. Very so nice. So this morning I sat down with this and I started reading it, and as with. My day, all hell broke loose. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Now I'm going to revisit it mm. on air with you guys. Very nice. Yeah. And uh, just to let you know, if, you're, if this is the first time you're watching this podcast, the concept is simple. We have a seventh grade CBSC <laughs> <laughs> civics chapter. <laughs> civics chapter, and we have guests who read it with us. That's basically the concept. Correct. correct. And we gave it, gave him the chapter 24 hours before this. Okay, so that is important. Because uh, he has no idea which chapter we was coming to him. We just asked him, Ki, we are doing this podcast with the 7th grade civics. Would you do it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, why not? And now he's in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Uh, but do you think after reading whatever you have read of the chapter, you understand the quality? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been enlightened. <laughs> I've been enlightened. I never knew that this was possible. <laughs> But is it like, uh, what was your overall impression after reading this? Like, this is a school textbook. That it's a better textbook than I had. Mm. Right. At least it's more visual and uh, they've thrown in sort of questions and stuff like that in the middle of the chapter, which we never had. Uh, And yeah, I mean, I think we outgrew these sort of... Comic strips. Comic strips, yeah, a few years before. They even threw in a few matrimonials and I was thinking, that's (laughs) interesting. Uh, but what was what was uh, it like for you in uh, school then? Like, which school did you go to? A. I started school in Sirinagar. Okay. Uh, I am co- well, one year convent educated. Oh, okay. Because for some reason the boys' school didn't have KG classes. Ah. So the boys actually started in a girls' school. So that's where I started. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> okay. I started in an all girls convent school. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> one year. Then graduated to the uh, boys' school here, just down the road, Burn Hall. Okay. Uh, and then I'm in the fifth standard, I moved to Himachal, to a boarding school, Lawrence School. Oh, Sina. okay. Mm. I was there till my plus two. But was this like ICSC? It was CBSC. CBS. Oh, it was CBSC. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you Burn Hall must have been JNK board. Okay. But uh, Sanar was CBSE. Right. We were calculating what year that was. And 89. I think 1989. Nine. Nine. We I wrong. lost a year <laughs> of school when I shifted from England to India. Ah, that's oh, another I didn't account for that. Either. Right. Yeah, you, right. you couldn't. <laughs> <have>. <laughs> we could, yeah. 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 We, we I'd have been amazed <laughs> again if you'd accounted for that. I as mean, well. we debated for an hour about this after <laughs> what to call <laughs> you, sir. <laughs> no, you guys really wasted a Shikara ride. Yeah? What do we call him and what year did he come out of school? And that's one hour done. <laughs> you picked up the phone and asked me. <laughs> but can you uh, take us to the exact place where you would be before an exam? Like imagine this is seventh grade, you are with your friends in your boarding school. Uh, the exam is in an hour, the viva is in an hour. Are you preparing or are you confident? No, no, I'm still looking at my books. You're still looking at I'm books. still yeah. looking at my books. Because of our anxiety. Yeah, yeah, of course. Were you a good student then? Average. Yeah, I, mean, Average. I, I managed. You managed. Some subjects were better than others. Like was uh, civics uh, like... I enjoyed civics. You enjoyed I enjoyed civics. civics, I enjoyed geography, I hated mathematics. Hmm. Hindi was um, almost a no-go area. I think I passed by grace marks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, As Sanskrit, all normal Sanskrit was compulsory. Oh, I yeah. had to do Sanskrit. Wow. Oh, you did the uh, whole memorizing and... Yeah, yeah, the Patati, 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 Patati. Yeah, yeah, all that. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, it's still there. Patati, Patata, Patati, Patati, the education Patati system works. It works. It works. Yeah, yeah. I am Sanskrit educated. <laughs> Um, and then when you had civics classes, like was your teacher good? Like did she try to like relate these lessons to your real life? Well, I remember one particular lesson in mm. which I seemed to know more than my teacher did. Okay. Uh, because my teacher argued and uh, continued to believe that Jamun, uh, that India had only one constitution. And I said, mm. no, India actually has two yeah. because JNK has its own. Yeah. Correct. And the teacher was like, can't be. I said, look, I come from JNK. <laughs> I'm telling you we have our own constitution. We have our own uh, flag. Right. And these are facts and you can't dispute them. He said, no, India has one constitution. And so that was a back and forth. So yeah. that sort of Did she made me realize it was a he. Uh, oh, it was it a he. Was a he. And yeah. that made me realize that perhaps Teachers don't quite know as much civics as they should do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this this kind of awkward situations have also happened with me. Where I but 
you know in in our education system it's such a authoritarian thing mm. also all teachers want to be authoritarians somehow so if you ask them an awkward question i would be either punished with god stand in the sun or stand outside or they would slap me around i mean that's the other extreme that they went yeah i'm to. not sure if i was made to stand in the dustbin for this but <laughs> there must have been consequences that i don't remember that i've sort of blacked out <laughs> which is good i think it's also self preservation in a way mm. yeah because there was a lot of sort of punishment and drill and stuff yeah. like that we were a school that uh, traced its lineage to uh, a very strong military association ah. oh. uh, so there was a lot of that kind of stuff yeah mm. interesting in a way it was like a lab of civics where you had to fight for the right of your own constitution for mm, the yeah, claim to of defend it. that you yeah. had a constitution and yeah. that, uh, well, now we don't so <laughs> now we don't yeah. Yeah. so she was right <laughs> 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 Well, uh, maybe a bit ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah, he exactly. Was right, yeah. About three or four decades. <laughs> yeah, she was playing five D chess with Omar right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah you don't know, but in two thousand and nineteen, this is what is going to happen. And then this have, argument that we just had <laughs> will not happen in two thousand nineteen. Sadly. Wow, that's some massive foreshadowing right there. Um, it, 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 so. Was there a place that you hung out with with your friend? Was there a water cooler, playground? About you? Yeah, there was a sort of an area behind the classes, right? Uh, okay, yeah. which is where the hangout spot would yeah. be for class. Yeah. And before the exams, you would cram. Yeah, that's where we'd leave our books, sort of, sort of. Yeah. Press them against our foreheads in the <laughs> hope that we would imbibe some more knowledge and then go into class and sit down for the exams. I don't think you are that far off because in the last forty minutes, I do think that your mind is elevated and you just retain more things than you ever have in that like last minute exam really? anxiety. Really? Then then it's down to that. <laughs> <laughs> then it's down. Then it's down to the last minute stuff that I actually got through school because the rest of the year I didn't really do much. Uh, but we can get into the chapter share. Let's do it. Yeah. No but. Do we start yes. with the teacher's note or we go straight to No, okay. I mean because I even marked the teacher's, marked the teacher's note. note. Oh, yeah. Wow. What did you like about the teacher's note? What Nothing. stood out to you? Nothing. Nothing. I you just didn't read like it. anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I was okay. hoping that if I read this I wouldn't have to read the rest. Of the <laughs> oh, <time>. But <laughs> that wasn't quite the yeah. way it worked. <laughs> because I don't have all the answers or no, anything. It, it didn't. And it didn't have any of the visual stuff. Visual is also Uh, just to let you know, uh, guys, uh, we have both prepared. See, we have taken our own notes also. And just so you know, <laughs> I have none, no <laughs> notes at all. I'm just going in. I'm just winging it. Okay, so I've got a pen in case I want to make some notes. So look at um, what they have done and then put this. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want to start, Shay? So uh, the first comic book, the first story that we see is uh, Kanta's story. Now uh, Kanta is uh, someone who works uh, at Mr Jain's house. At wow, you didn't even need to take notes. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so Kanta is working at uh, Mr Jain's house and uh, the comic book starts with Kanta being in a line with many other people where they are in a line to vote. I mean there's almost like this sense of celebration where they like isn't it amazing that we are all different people and we are in the same line to vote and they agree and they're like great we are all equal that's great and in theory it seems like that's what the way it is. but the day ends with kanta having a problem her having to go to a hospital for her kid but there it's a line where it's not equal like the equality that was there in, in the, the morning, morning wasn't there in the night in the same day lines completely changed the idea of equality that illusion is completely shattered for uh, kanta and that's what the textbook also asks you it pushes the students to ask if uh, kanta is actually equal like yeah. a thought that she has so do you think equality is like the idea of equality it's almost a hoax like it's like an ideal that's far well it is an ideal hmm. but it's an ideal we're far removed from hmm. right I, mean, i i mean i don't think there's ever been an equal society anywhere hmm. uh, it's all sort of degrees of inequality right uh, and we see a lot of that uh, in this country all the time yeah uh, that inequality inequality is brought about by economic standing by virtue of your birth by virtue of your education okay. uh, but i mean any everywhere you look uh, there is inequality yeah i mean it's it's a bit of a utopian concept also right it is. i mean it's mm. also impossible would you say to have like equality i can't imagine it ever being uh, i mean i can't imagine a world where you would be able to Uh, sort of create an yeah. entirely equal yeah. society and well, communism tried that well look mm. what happened to communism <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh. but uh, 
like so if you had to say look at this ideal in a very practical way like you know all of this is theory i would say but in a very real sense how can we move towards that ideal then well like i said i mean if you accept that an entirely equal society is not possible hmm. what you need to do is to try and reduce the degrees of inequality right i think that is a more attainable objective hmm. Uh, if we set out uh, to achieve this utopian objective of equality right. uh, we will not succeed whereas if we set ourselves more attainable goals like mm. for example from this book i mean if kanta has an easier uh, job getting her kid mm. uh, uh, an appointment with the doctor right. if she doesn't have to borrow money mm. uh, from her employers so that she can pay the doctor yeah. to have the kid treated I mean, stuff like that yeah. i mean these are these are simpler objectives like she says i mean she wants to vote for somebody who will deliver piped water yeah. to where she lives yeah. uh, i mean these are these are attainable objectives mm-hmm. right. uh, to think that we can perhaps elevate kanta to the level where she mm. and mr jain will be equals everywhere mm. is utopian yeah. right. but if we can reduce some of the problems that kanta has uh yes that's that's a, that's that's a more attainable objective but that is the job that people usually think is the government's job right you know no, they're mean, not wrong i, I mean part of it sure, is the government's job but i mean it, like so here's my problem with this uh, whole thing not a problem but just like a thought that i had so this is so kanta should be helped by say universal health care right so that she's e- easier access to hospital and can treat her kid uh universal healthcare will be delivered by a government right which is public good which they, which is being delivered so that some level of equality is achieved i would say but as a person who is uh, in not in government as a person who is not elected or has has basically no power in this structure is there a way to for me to push this ideal then is there even a way to look at it that way i guess i mean individuals do have a role to play yeah. uh, particularly individuals who are in a position to help yeah. and it doesn't necessarily have to come from government hmm. uh, it comes from non government organizations business uh, business houses that do well right. and want to contribute uh, towards uh, hmm. social responsibility it comes from people who are educated who are in a better position uh, let's assume a doctor hmm. uh, who is able to take out 2 hours from his or her day hmm. to treat uh, patients yeah. who otherwise are not uh, economically of of uh, sort of that mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. sound set uh, fitting uh, who would otherwise reach this doctor so there are things individuals can do but we can't uh, allow government to absolve itself of its responsibility right, right. the primary framework has to be uh, the government absolutely so absolutely it has to and it's a really funny so i have this theory uh, uh, over indulge me and tell me if i'm wrong uh, during the upa2 everyone said that the government was useless i mean the policy paralysis and you know everything you know the rhetoric you remember mm. the rhetoric that was there uh, i was a, i was a lamp back then mm. i was like working in parliament and i was very new so i was very annoyed with the government right because nothing was happening the parliament was not functioning laws were not being passed there were scams and arnab was at everybody's case so that was happening um in, in interestingly enough the gdp was still going up during that time right and now post 2014 when we have this very efficient government which is like just strong arming and like making decisions after decisions without really thinking about it the gdp is going down my theory is that when there is a government that is useless people don't depend on it so they work hard <laughs> to fix no. problems themselves that's one yeah that's i haven't looked at it that way <laughs> how did uh, you look at it <laughs> <laughs> no, I I I I haven't looked at it from this point of view. Yeah. Maybe you're right. So maybe this current government should be a bit more useless and yeah. we will do better. Yeah. I mean if think about it like you know like if I come to you with a problem and you're like can't do anything. So mm-hmm. I'll have to solve my own problem, right? Mm. Maybe that was the situation back then where you go to government yeah. government is like boss yeah. we don't know so what to do. So the best way for government to deliver <laughs> is to not deliver. Is to be useless, yeah. right? Okay. Well, <laughs> he approves But this. It, I just think, want to note this. I think it's ironic. I don't know whether I, I would I, risk doing it if I was elected <laughs> to office, but it's definitely something to keep at the back of one's mind. That would be a fun campaign though. Yeah, I know. Well, I like vote for me, I'm going to do nothing <laughs> and everything will work. The yes. most honest yeah. politician. Wow, it's yeah. <laughs> incredible. And people will be like JNK will progress because I will do nothing. Yes. So vote for me. Yes. You should try it though. 
but you are not fighting the elections again i am well i am not my party will oh your yes. party will so, yeah so yeah. you are not, I'm not sure i can sell this slogan to my party <laughs> sad vote for us we do nothing <laughs> we would have taken credit for that then yeah yeah you <laughs> trademark it right here but yeah. well, somebody will buy it somebody will buy it yeah. but I, i i still do think that like we are still absolving the government of its responsibility again like even as like if as a normal person i am doing everything i can because the government isn't helping me i feel there are some structural inequalities that can't be mended by an individual like for that for sure. you me- need government intervention you need power from someone who is meant to be looking after the people like it's not like a by product that is supposed to be the main primary purpose of being elected of being elected yeah tax payers money yeah. well in defense of upa2 they did put a lot of money into rural india that's true uh, which perhaps would account for some of the bounce in the hmm. in the in the gdp hmm. right. but i mean the scams and everything else was a was yeah. just something else entirely yeah right. absolutely they did they did do lot of lot of welfare but i mean yeah um i want to move on to this fun thing which omar can you read this please yeah which uh, one this part starting from in a demo In a democratic country like India, all adults, irrespective of, of what religion they belong to, how much education they have had, what caste they are, and whether they are rich or poor, are allowed to vote. This, This is as, as you have you. already read in yeah. class six, which I haven't, <laughs> <laughs> and is called universal adult franchise yeah. and is an essential aspect of all democracies. So, do you are you allowed to vote right now? Well, no, because they're not having elections here. Yeah, so we haven't had an election for an assembly in J and K since two thousand fourteen. 2014 yeah, yeah that's so what so we are now 22 so 8 years but you can vote in the general elections right yeah yeah you can vote in but the then general. i mean a general election is to elect a parliamentarian sure sure uh, there's a reason why you have multiple levels of government right how did you feel after you read that i want my vote <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i mean i want to be able to choose yeah, uh, yeah absolutely and and this is not just me people generally here yeah they want a government that is answerable to them they want representatives who come out and and meet them central rule governor's rule is is a really poor alternative to mm. elected government yeah uh, what what has your experience been about that till now like as in like how has the gov- governors been performing and how are you not just personally but as a politician how is it affecting well there has been very little evidence of it on the ground right and particularly if you uh, sort of correlated to the tall promises that were made immediately after 5th august 2019 mm. about how Uh, development would sort of touch every household joblessness would disappear right uh, there would be a massive economic upswing etc etc none of that is visible on the ground there right. are no new projects no new development no new jobs uh, the only thing they have to take advantage of is a sort of jump in tourism because post covid everybody wants right. to get out yeah yeah uh, so i mean in that's not a unique story to jammu and kashmir yeah uh, i was recently I, i was visiting my school up in 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 himachal in sanar mm. and uh, small hotels in a corner somewhere are charging 35 40000 rupees a night uh, because of the demand because because there yeah. there's demand people mm-hmm. just want to get away mm-hmm. uh, so i mean that's hardly uh, unique to jammu and kashmir and hardly a credit to this government but that's all they can talk about because right. you tourists are there mm-hmm. uh, big deal yeah okay fine they're coming great but what about move beyond that mm-hmm. nothing and what about the people who live in the state like beyond people i wish they lived in a state we don't live in a state you don't live we in live in a state. union territory right uh, right which is again sort of something that is very difficult to come to terms with mm. why was jammu and kashmir downgraded what mm. have we done I can understand the BJP had made an issue out of Article Three Seventy. They fought elections on it. Mm. They were in a position to do something about it. They did it. Mm. But I don't recall any political party saying that we will dismember J and K and reduce it from a state to union territory. Right. right. Uh, but they did. That it. actually didn't fit. In, I was also wondering why that happened. Right. And I, I mean, I didn't find. Well, any I have a, I have a theory. Yeah. Uh, which is that, I think the center. realize that they need something to bargain and negotiate with at some point in time they're going to have to have assembly elections right. there's going to be a government right. that government is going to make demands right now if you had not dismembered us and reduced us to a union territory then the only thing we would have had to ask for is 370 and 35a mm. see now at least uh, even though parties like mine continue to press for 
for elections. Sort of, no, not just elections, but uh, the Supreme Sp Court to begin hearings yeah, yeah, on this yeah. matter and to pronounce judgment over what was done. Yeah. There are a number of parties who move beyond that mm. and say that, look, our be all and end all is only about statehood, mm. uh, which then sort of you, you, it starts to make sense that what the center did, because yes, you've given them an issue on which they can talk mm. and something that you can give them, because you're definitely not going to talk to them about 370 and 35A. Again, of course, there's this whole push towards how 370 was removed because, uh, well, it made it a real part of India. Then Jammu became Jammu and Kashmir became a real part of India. That was the whole rhetoric that was around it. But then, you know, a reasonable rhetoric that, not a rhetoric, but reasonable logic behind the removal of 370 was also that it was already very diluted. Uh, it was uh, basically symbolic, is what, what was said that 370 was symbolic and therefore the removal won't really affect then why anything. Do it? Yeah, but then again, why symbolism. So, well, why? I yeah. mean, if it was all, if, if all it was was symbolic mm -hmm. and it was something that, I mean, the people of Jammu and Kashmir were happy with this little bit of symbolism, mm -hmm. then leave it where it is. That's very uh, true. How is it bothering <laughs> you? That's very true. Yeah, I mean. So, I mean, you can't have both, you can't say that, oh, Removing it will further integrate JNK into the rest of the country. Removing it will sort of remove separatism. Terror will be done away with. Yeah. Development will flow. All these things will happen because 370 was taken away. And then in the same breath, turn around and say, well, actually, there was nothing in 370 anyway, so why are you bothering? Mm. That's uh, true. You can't, you can't, you can't use both arguments. Yeah, that's true. Now, like, coming back to the book, I was just wondering, right? So today in CBSC schools, this is being taught, hmm. right? Um, do you think there might be an effort to actually tell people that Jammu and Kashmir well doesn't have an assembly and can't vote anymore? Well, I hope some kids will, will sort of... In Jammu and Kashmir, will they tell them? I hope so. Uh, but I doubt it. Uh, there isn't that much scope for sort of out-of-syllabus talk in, in classes. and Guys, oh, really? yeah. if, you are, if you are watching this and if you are in 7th grade or if your kids are in 7th grade, this is actually an interesting exercise to find out, right? You know, whether when they read particularly this paragraph, which is, you can see it here, it will show up as an image also. Yeah. It says you have an equal <coughs> right to vote, which means that I here have an equal right to an elected assembly as any other state or union territory with an assembly in India does have. Yeah. And yet for eight years, I have been deprived of that right. Yeah. So if you have any of experiences so of it's, teachers it's telling you... one thing to teach it and quite another to implement it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So leave it in the comments below is what I was coming to. It's urgent that this be updated because otherwise, I mean, you are just hiding the truth from people, right? You're brainwashing kids into not even understanding the reality that they I mean, sure, it should be actually mentioned, but I'm... I mean, at least a citation, at least like an asterisk, at least. <laughs> I think that's expecting too much. But yeah, uh, so like we can move on to the next page, which is the seventh page. And this is very interesting. So it's, it's uh, so now they move on to caste, mm. right? Where they're talking a lot about uh, other kinds of equality uh, after Kanta. They are not talking about... Um, oh, Prakash Valmiki. Yes. Mm. Uh, the, the interesting thing is they have given ads on the side, uh, which is like these matrimonial ads. And uh, there, is a <laughs> there is a comment under it. Circle the reference to caste in the matrimonial advertisements given above. Right? And we were just reading about this. Do you know what a BHP is? Like, if you read the ad on top, it says, uh, Alliance invited for 32 LMS. No, I've, I must say, I don't spend much time for using the matrimony. <laughs> so, I, I would not be able to interpret these things. That would be you. really weird if he did. <laughs> he absolutely knew it off the top of his head. Oh, BHP, yeah. It, it says, a cast no bar, SCST excuse, said BHP must. I don't understand. I can only Im imagine that the P stands for photograph, but what the BH stands for, oh. I don't. I think it's biodata horoscope photograph. There you go. I, oh, yes, wow. which is why it's all caps. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to send your biodata, your horoscope. Well, I got one out of three. <laughs> <laughs> Grace marks again. Yeah, yeah. I just about scraped through. Oh, biodata horoscope. Oh, See, fun, uh, fun. somebody who spends <laughs> yes. time with the matrimonials. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> Uh, and, and the ones below that both have, one have a Gupta boy, which is Gupta's uh, caste and then one there is... One wants an Iyengar. Uh, Iyengar? 
the next one yeah the yeah. next one has Brahmin actually Brahmin it has Ayam tamil brahmin written in bold there mm. so um also very very many what's ca- a swati star yeah there is a swati i was also wondering you think that's also an acronym no i can't no, yeah. <laughs> must be the star that the person is born under or wants the prospective match to be born under like like the horoscope stars what what is it called mangal grey and whatever whatever right. you are born under maybe that's true uh, there is this one line i would like to read out uh, one of the more common forms of inequality in india is the caste system if you live in rural india your caste identity is something that you probably learned or experienced very young if you live in urban india some of you might think that people no longer believe in caste but just look at these matrimonials which we just did i want i was wondering uh, omar if you know now 12 year old is reading this right and is it realistic for a a 12 year old to actually have a conversation on caste with either teacher or parents and also in a way that is that is a conversation not a shouting match right uh, is there a realistic way in which we can approach this i think that's a tricky one yeah uh, i think it's a conversation that needs to be had but i think it's a conversation that will be probably more easily understood by a, a kid who's on the receiving end yeah. of caste discrimination mm-hmm. yeah. yeah as opposed to one who hasn't seen it whether yeah. rural or urban yeah uh, it's like this privilege basically yeah. upper caste uh, yeah. privilege i was just talking to shreyas about this right so we grew up in a very upper caste privileged environment and our family uh, so we are cousins by the way just oh, to give okay. you context right. so sorry our family when i say like you're like <laughs> weird you look at me like what is happening yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but so our family essentially uh, comes from that whole brahmin superiority sort of mindset which is you know we are born in a certain way so we have this kind of a superior something god given whatever so uh, like we deserve more right that is the usual um, way that goes um i i have never been able to have a conversation with my parents about this ever like they just get very defensive um but that's why why i'm asking is there have you experienced or have you seen any realistic examples i of i this? can't i can't claim to have no i mean obviously one has read about them one has heard about them from colleagues yeah. and things like that uh, but uh, the kind of upbringing i've had and the schooling that i've had uh, religion caste none of this actually played yeah. a part Uh, did that handicap you i don't think so uh, it Because didn't, it didn't blind me it didn't blind me to the reality of what happens it right. just meant that i haven't personally experienced it of course. i right. don't have to personally experience poverty to know that poverty exists and yeah. we need to do something about it of course similarly uh, i mean we know that caste discrimination is a reality that said uh, jammu and kashmir i think has less uh, mm. practical caste discrimination as opposed to other parts of the country because of the land reforms right that were initiated uh, post independence basically tenant farmers were overnight converted into land owners without having to pay any compensation mm. oh. so jammu and kashmir and particularly i mean most of the uh, mm. dalit population lives uh, jammu side okay jammu is one of the only places in the country where a dalit groom can actually ride a horse with oh. his barath to go and pick up his bride because oh, wow. they own the land that they live on right uh, they have that status that they have acquired they may belong to a scheduled caste right uh, but uh, that has not impacted their their economic well-being because of the reforms that were initiated uh, so in real terms yeah. we see less of it yeah oh i i also just want to quickly point out how even the chapter i mean definitely not intentionally but it is assuming some things about the reader and who the you is so the sentence is if you live in urban india some of you might think that people no, no longer believe in caste so the some of you is also like an upper caste savarna you like they're talking to people mm. who are blind to caste mm. like like you said like the kids who are experiencing caste and the problems because of it they are not getting a mention yeah. they are not being referred yeah. to mm. it's only the ones who are outside who are of outside it. of it who Correct. have who don't see it on a day to day basis they will assume that it doesn't exist yeah, yeah. Mm. and also like right after that there is this story of om prakash valmiki Valmi famous mm. dalit writer and his experiences which basically is you know how he had to sweep the school grounds yeah, yeah. against uh, in school like his headmaster asked him to sweep the school mm. uh, he had to sit away from the kids mm. etc now that is third person mm. right so even that's what i think we were discussing that that 
in this example where you might be you're mm -hmm. you're talking to you it's like this assumption that uh, you are from an upper caste and you but then when it comes to actually like dalit experiences it's like third person, third person. i i wanted to also like dig a little deeper here uh, with you because again i have been trying to figure this out for a while and i have made public mistakes you know like by having the wrong views about caste wrong in the sense insensitive views about caste because i was brought up in a certain environment now you have been in public life as well were there instances where you also had to take a beating and you learned because of it or not that i can think of. not that you can think no. of um would you say that you had some sort of other exposure which made you cast no i don't know uh, i don't know that i did i i don't know what it stems from but right. i don't recall an instance where i suffered from foot and mouth disease i've done it with a lot of other things mm. yeah but i don't recall an instance where it was caste politics related again i think it also stems from the fact that uh, sort of the politics that my party does yeah doesn't derive its sort of support base from playing mm. sort of religious caste right. or regional politics uh, right so it's not something that we would not normally be sort of focusing on or talking about right no it it also maybe as you said it was because of the environment of jammu and kashmir that you maybe did not encounter this mm. uh, that that makes sense because yeah. like from where we come from this is in the conversations in a very subtle way right, right. and it might not be as bad as say in uttar pradesh or whatever but there is like a sense of division in mm. in nagpur we come from nagpur mm. so it it is very obvious correct like even uh, the fact that diksha bhumi is in nagpur which is one of the biggest institutions one of the biggest monuments that uh, uh, people from oppressed caste come as mm. like almost a pilgrimage but as kids when we were told about diksha bhumi and everything that happened it was always like oh there are going to be lots of people coming there are going to be there's going to be a crowd there's going to be traffic like it was never mm. told as uh i don't know like a moment of celebration right. yeah. yeah that See, it should be i guess we were really insulated from all this yeah. religion caste none of this was a sort of factor growing up mm. like i said in boarding school yeah. we never knew who uh, anybody was in terms of their family their background anything right. all we knew was that we were living in the same dormitory eating the same food right. studying yeah. the same books it's only after we passed out from school that we realized so and so was this rich or this influential right. or this important right. etc none of it mattered but for you then uh, like let's take religion for example right so growing up uh, did you have some conversations with your say father or family oh, yeah, we, or we, i mean we were brought up to know what religion we belong to how i mean how important our place in that religion is right. we were imparted religious education right. uh, we would have a molvi who would come and teach us so yeah. i mean that grounding was all given okay. but it was never from the point of view that your religion and your religion makes you more superior to <laughs> somebody else or yeah. or anything like that or yeah. that you can sit where you are and look down upon others right. or uh, within sort of islam you belong to a certain sect that is sort of superior to anybody else none of that right. it was simply to understand the religion that we belong to and to be able to practice it right. but it wasn't so that we could sit in judgment over anybody mm. else that's very interesting i think that's a very different sort of perspective on how religious teachings can be sort of given as yeah. well uh there's also a question of privilege there i guess mm. right so i mean um maybe because you come from the kind of background that you come from uh the teachings that you were given were different i wouldn't be able to make an assumption that to yeah, the contrary that's fair sure. enough fair so. enough fair enough um yeah so just you went on a journey yesterday this uh, this morning uh, this morning you yeah. so he got up at 6 uh, okay uh, and uh, the idea was to discuss what to call you of course oh, it was group yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but the idea was that uh, work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we are doing this episode one, and we wanted to do a box pop, right? And like dumbasses, we came here, parachuted here, and we were like, you know what? We'll go on the streets and ask the Kashmiris how to citizen, right? And I'm amazed you didn't get arrested. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm surprised we aren't doing this in Central Jail, <laughs> Srinagar, where I've come to bail you out or something like that. Third person yeah. who said that to us today. Yeah. Um, go on, Shreyas. What happened? 
But I'll tell you. To be honest, we didn't ask the people. We were just dis- the thing is that this works. You were still discussing. We were whether, discussing. What should we call them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's always a problem. Yeah. So the thing is that this works for idea started at the Mumbai airport. Okay, where we just ask people, oh, how to citizen? They'd be like, be yourself, and be like, okay, whatever. <laughs> And we had the same idea, but when we came to Kashmir, like it took us some time to realize that we had come to a place where these are very loaded terms. And to yeah. ask that, that's yeah. like a very different question. Mm. So even when we were trying to, I mean, we didn't ask this question, obviously. Otherwise, we do deserve to go to jail. We didn't. But we were asking people just general conversation, general chatter. What we were hearing uh, with our cameras on was that people actually favored how Kashmir was now. And we were amazed by that. We were like, what is... What is happening? Mm-hmm. And then the Shikara Wala, who was tired of listening to our discussions also. Yeah. <laughs> the Shikara Wala went, Ki, uh, you do know that like you have the camera on, right? Mm. You are not going to get an, an answer. An honest answer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If the camera is on. Yeah. Universally today, people are worried about expressing their mm. true feelings. Yeah. Uh, because they don't want a knock on their door from the local thana wala. Yeah. Ke chaliye bhai sahab aaja ye humne aap se baat karni hai. Yeah. Which is which is what happens. Yeah. So they will tell you what you want to hear. Right. Zip it Correct. and get on with their Correct. lives. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Like someone was like ki, agli baar Modi sarkar and we were like ye dal lake pe kaise hai bol rahe hai? It's because <laughs> the no, camera was on. Yeah. 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 Once your camera is on you don't worry. We'll say whatever you want. <laughs> we just don't want any trouble. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's fascinating because after the camera turned off. Uh, after the camera turned off, the board guy was like, it's... it's Yeah, it's, because the might of the state is used so oh. disproportionately oh. and the laws are so sort of in favor of the government or the establishment. Right. And then the institution that you look to for justice, the courts, are yeah. so slow in delivering it. Yeah. That really it's... I mean, I don't blame people. I, I would advise them, look, just zip it. Mm-hmm. Just, there's no, I mean, point uh, no point trouble. being brave yeah, and, and yeah. all the rest of it. Live to fight another day. No, but it's that's fine. absolutely the feeling that I got while talking to people mm-hmm. also. That there's an element of self-preservation there. It was interestingly enough, we went to West Bengal during the elections, uh, last elections. I was covering the elections. There also I found this that, you know, when, when the camera is on, of course, everybody belongs to some party. So either they will be praising the BJP outright or they will be praising the TMC outright. But when the camera was on, yeah, yaar, sab chor hai, yaar, kya <laughs> like, you know, that's the feeling. Yeah. It's I, It makes me wonder. I mean, I get Kashmir also. Like, I mean, uh, if it, do you think it will ever come to a point in the near future where people would actually tell their true feelings on a camera? Yeah, I think so. And and it it's like I mean it'll be easier for it to happen in, in an elected government. Mm. Right. Uh, whoever that elected government mm. uh, whichever one it may what be. What would change then? I I I don't think you'll find uh, the state as repressive uh, okay. as it is now. See because today you're answerable to nobody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this simmering resentment, this simmering anger, it doesn't reach you. Yeah. Uh, whereas when you're sort of in, a, in an elected position, uh, I mean, ultimately, feedback reaches you. Yeah? Right. You know what people are saying. You know how they're reacting. Right. Uh, which is not to say that, look, you have to sort of suddenly start condoning all sorts of anti-national activities. But there's a big difference between telling the truth about a current government yeah. and being anti-national. Precisely. Whereas, I mean, right now, that distinction has been completely sort of eroded. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the Speaking against the government is tantamount to speaking against the country. Yeah. Precisely, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. there's no nuance left there, basically. There is no nuance. There's no, nuance. There's no gray. Right. It's all black and white. I mean, how do you even talk about nuance when like just all the stories, what, whoever we have been meeting, we have been talking to, we are being told that people are being picked up only because they mention something in a conversation, not even on like a public platform, yeah. social media Between platform. Between friends. Between friends and it gets out and they are picked up. Yeah, you have, to be, you have to be very careful. I mean, even a one-to-one conversation, you never know where screenshots will reach. Right, that's true. Uh, you just never know who you're talking to. So but that, that's the, by the way, one thing I do want to say, uh, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple and also Pegasus, uh, which is actually yes. the fastest way to get this podcast. Yes. So if you're listening to it there, uh, check us out. The yeah. audio quality is great on that. Yes, yeah. uh, we love this government. We love everything. <laughs> I do that all the time. I do that all the time with my phone. Yeah, I put my phone like, there. And, and Omar, Omar is just sitting there and randomly his phone is like, I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but what do you say when you're talking to your phone? I just say, look, this government's great. <laughs> they can do no it's wrong. It's reaching somewhere. Yeah. 
Somebody is going to listen to it. Somebody is going to listen to it. Should we tell him what people said about him though? Should I've we? heard it. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm in their phones. Don't worry. It's a, it's a, it's a, what do you call a legacy of when I was in office. I didn't take the software out. So I know what's happening. Yeah, it's happening. You're so very aware. I've got a room somewhere. Yeah. Before anybody believes me. None of that is true. I'm just being flippant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but should we? Uh, should we? Should we tell him? Uh, I mean, uh, we are sitting in his house. We are so. sitting in his house. I suggest you wait for coffee because yeah. <laughs> I might have something mixed in it. Have your coffee, finish your interview. You don't want me walking out. Of course. When we're done, then you can tell me. <laughs> By then it'll be too late. I can't do any damage. So. No, but tell him. Basically, what we heard was in general cynicism where people had just lost faith in the idea of a governmental power, be it state, union, territory, national government, just helping them. Where it wasn't even about individuals where the faith has crumbled and that was like it was distressing to see that yeah, it's not it's not a nice situation to be in uh, where sort of confidence in institutions uh, yeah. is is hard to come by but i'm not surprised we're in that position mm. given everything that's happened over the last few years uh, it's not difficult to believe that people are uh, sort of disillusioned mm. Uh, but I still believe, come elections, mm. uh, the same people who today are telling you, no, no, we don't care. No, they'll be lining up to put their votes and hope for a better tomorrow. Right. But one thing that people said about, I think two people said about him was that when you got, uh, when you were under house arrest, no protest happened. Right. And uh, which actually shows that nobody cares. Mm. Uh, what would you say to that? Is that... What was the last issue people here protested on? I think 370. No. No, 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 no. There were no protests. There were no allowed, protests. No? Yeah. There were no protests. Yeah. Point in in the last four years, or yeah, in the last four four years. There was a, point me towards a protest. There was a Chopin May. There was like some disturbance. What protest or did protest. you have? I mean, it was crushed down. I mean, yeah. Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani's funeral right. was handed handled in the in the most abhorrent way. Mm. You virtually snatched his body from his home and forced his burial with most of his family members not there in the dead of night. Who protested? Mm. True. Mirwais Umar Farooq has been in, under house arrest for three years. The governor yesterday claimed that he was free even though he's not. Show me one person who's outside his house protesting. Mm. I, I accept mm. that nobody cares what happens to us. I, I'm, as you say, Purane Papi. Mm. I, I, I don't expect anybody to protest for me. Okay, now, what about them? Mm. That's true. Yasin Malik was recently identified as mm. the kidnapper of Rubaiya Sayyid, by Rubaiya Sayyid. Mm. Please show me a protest about that. Mm. Or when he was sentenced to, I don't know how many lifetimes in prison for, in a terror funding case. Protest? Did you see any? No. I rest my case. Is there, uh, okay, so I just wanted to sort of come to the point where, uh, let, let's imagine a day in the life of Omar Abdullah right now. Right? And I really want to know how much restriction there is on you right now. Right? You know, on just day to day movement, do you feel some sort of restriction on a personal level, uh, some sort of control? What is happening? Well, it depends on uh, the occasion and what one is going to do. Right. Uh, there have been occasions when we wanted to go out, visit somewhere, or do something, and the government has uh, sort of so moto locked us in our homes for that particular day. Yeah, uh, I mean it doesn't happen every day. I, I can't even say it happens every month, but it doesn't. Ha it does happen right. uh, from time to time. And I, you know, I'm not as concerned as I, I mean for what will happen to me hmm. because there's very little they can do given the profile. Yeah, I mean, I mean putting a truck outside my gate suddenly becomes a story that everybody sits up and takes note of. Right, uh, doing it to junior colleagues of mine. Nobody mm. will notice. Mm. These true. sports apps will be locked up in their homes for months on end or mm. worse still taken to a police thana mm. uh, and forgotten about. Mm. So I have to weigh my actions and my words very carefully, less from what it will mean for me, mm. but definitely more in terms of what it will mean for colleagues of mine. Yeah. Equality. That's what I was thinking. We are, yeah. It's chapter one. We are talking about on equality. Like yeah. how are these conversations happening? The right to free speech uh, is a far more diluted right in JNK mm. than it is in other parts of the country. Uh, what passes for normal politics in other parts of the country mm. uh, would be a jailable offence uh, in Jammu and Kashmir these days. 
that's what that's the sense i'm also getting and uh, i mean uh, it, it, i mean when i was reading this chapter and i was like oh we are going to talk to omar about this there are so many instances where where it just seems almost parodyish like in places i mean you also read this right and it just feels strange and that's what i constantly keep wondering where um, our kids in school actually being taught this right now well they're being taught this but what's actually happening on what's the ground what's actually happening yeah I, i i mean it'll be a very brave teacher who'll actually talk to their kids about what is real rather yeah, what than is what real. is yeah. sort of put in books and and the teacher is not just fighting the syllabus right the teacher is fighting all the news mm-hmm. all the people around them mm-hmm. whatsapp forwards it's yeah. like a propaganda of like an insane yeah you scale. just never know which parent will get upset with what the teacher has said and mm-hmm. god help yeah yeah, yeah. that happens uh, so we'll we'll move to this question which we wanted to ask him which is <coughs> recognizing dignity yeah uh, so this tiny question in the blue niche can you think of an incident in your life in which your dignity was violated how did this make you feel taking trolls on twitter out of the equation oh uh, because they sort of try and violate your dignity all the time yeah uh, why are they why are you taking them out of the equation Please because i now them. don't <laughs> sort of bother with them okay. i very seldom read anything they write so mm. leave those out no i can't really think of well i'd like well i mean was being locked up for 8 months in solitary almost solitary confinement or, or sort of an affront mm. to my dignity maybe yeah. being called uh, all sorts of names by the highest constitutional office of jnk well yes no uh, yeah. so yeah and how did it make me feel angry angry uh, disappointed do Perhaps you in some do, way bitter are you, are you like um, more angry i mean is it like a constant right is anger a constant for you no but there's a sort of floor level below which it doesn't drop hmm. right uh, some things make me angrier uh, but there is a sort of threshold level that it, it doesn't drop below what does that mean exactly i mean it means that there is a sort of a sorry, maybe a higher than i would have liked uh, mm. level of anger yeah. uh, that one sort of lives with as a constant right but that bothers you yeah it's not nice yeah. who wants to live with this knowledge that there are things that keep you angry all the time yeah yeah exactly and you think that sentiment is there throughout the people at the oh, yeah, sure. also uh, there is i mean there is a level of anger that I mean, we don't bring it up to the surface you don't act on it yeah you seldom talk about it mm-hmm. yeah uh, but it's a reality that you live with yeah in the the next part where they say equality in indian democracy it reads the indian constitution recognizes every person as equal this means that every individual in the country including male and female persons from all caste religion tribes educational economic backgrounds are recognized as equal that is again one of those ironic statements that we are reading out today and uh, i mean there is literally nothing more i can say about uh, say the situation of kashmir like i i am i'm now often finding myself at a loss of words because i guess i also don't have an experience like you do right It's sitting here like you called us here right and um, for example my parents his parents everyone's parents are like be careful hmm. you know we don't know what will happen there we don't know this like our producer her parents are freaking out like you know like oh, you're going to kashmir yeah, i don't blame her because i mean you really don't know yeah. what is around the corner yeah. i i I'll give you a small example uh, my brother in law uh, he was out somewhere yesterday day before yesterday i think day before yesterday evening and uh, he suddenly got a call Mm. Uh, that his aunt uh, was going home uh, after attending a wedding mm. and uh, was caught uh, in this grenade blast that happened near Nishad Garden right. now the police claimed that only one auto driver was slightly injured she's uh, at home uh, with a shrapnel wound on the side of her head minor but right, right. she's got an injury and her right. car is peppered with shrapnel right. uh, and all she was doing was going home after a wedding just bad luck yeah. that there happened to be a grenade blast or something just as she crossed and and it hit her now it could have been much worse mm-hmm. thankfully yeah. it wasn't yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. the reality that we live with yeah. you don't know where when how something like this will happen you just never know when you'll get caught in the middle of something that is not of your making not right. of your choosing mm, right uh, but uh, it's something that you will have to deal with but that is exactly what happened yesterday with us as well right you know like when we landed uh, some news came in that this grenade blast had happened and uh, everyone freaked out you mm. know like 
calls from offices and you know whatever ki is everything okay there etc mm-hmm. also but there is also a uh, it, i mean i guess it 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 also feels nice in a way when i went like when we went out and when we were on the dal lake and when people were actually buying and selling things and you know just going about their normal life that also felt sort of nice to uh, see but how do we marry these two realities i think they sort of they married themselves because of the re- I mean, it's the reality that we've lived with for all these years yeah uh, you can't sit at home mm-hmm. thinking that this is what's going to happen mm-hmm. you just have to live with the reality not the possibility of what will happen right because if you live with the possibility of what will happen you'll never leave your home mm-hmm. you'll never leave a room right uh, therefore you step out knowing that something is possible but you also live with the hope that it won't happen and that you or your loved ones or your friends or whoever they are will come back safe at the end of the day uh, that's that's the only way to get through it otherwise you lose your sanity okay. yeah that's also true actually like, i mean uh, and and on top of it covid right so like i mean people the people we spoke to also said that you know last two years to covid you know was there mm. so no tourism etc and now there is this explosion of tourism as you said mm. which is happening everywhere across so in a way is it helping them come back to normal or is it still it sort of drag people out but then even without tourism they would have come out normal right. life has to go on of all course that, all that has i mean the tourism has helped <coughs> right. an economic boost yeah but tourism is limited to a handful of areas mm-hmm. so there are pockets of sirinagar there's gulmarg pehalgam sonmarg etc etc but it's not as if the rest of the the rest of kashmir is just sitting at the in home in mm-hmm. their homes mm-hmm. uh, waiting for something to develop that's so true. i mean normal life has resumed kids are going to school colleges offices are open yeah uh, tourism has just sort of incentivized it right uh, right brought people out right. and, and it's helped people earn yeah uh, so there is an economic boost so there is, there has to be there has I to mean, be yeah. this is money that goes straight into people's pockets yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and the good thing is it happens at i mean uh, it's it's very widespread when mm-hmm. I mean, the areas that where tourists come uh, i mean you really don't need any other economic activity right. Right. right because whether you have a pony or you have a taxi or you have a restaurant or you have a, a hotel various stratas of of sort of economic uh, activity yeah. they're all covered correct yeah. correct like even even the market that we the floating market mm-hmm. we went to it was so wonderful to see sort of the kinds That's of right. shops and then like subsidiary shops mm-hmm. that have also come yeah, up yeah. on the side yeah. and uh, there is like deals with shikara people which they have which they will take tourists to a particular place it was like this bustling economy on a lake yeah. well it's uh, similar to i mean uh, on the like the delhi chandigarh highway yes. if you're going by bus <laughs> yes. your bus wala will have a deal with a particular dhaba <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't matter which dhaba you want to eat in you'll yeah. eat where the bus driver stops <laughs> absolutely so here also your taxi wala will have a deal with a particular handicraft guy right. or a particular ghat where you'll get your shikara from yes. it's fine it's i mean that's the way the economy the works yeah. yeah absolutely and like i don't um, grudge them that no, no 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 there's nothing to grudge i mean it did take us to like some very nice oh it was places. incredible yeah. you were more than and you know one one interesting cultural thing that we saw was that so i'm from bombay is from delhi we come with the anxieties of like the city right so every time we jeeped something we would show them the thing and they would be like why are you showing me hmm. i trust you hmm. I trust you. They got offended when we were showing them okay, like the. You think we won't believe you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to ask, how are people in Kashmir still trusting mainlanders after everything that has been done? Like, how is that basic trust? I think they realize that I mean, government did it. Right. Right. You guys didn't. Correct. Correct. Uh, it's not as if all of you went into parliament yeah. and sort of passed this. <laughs> act or whatever it was your reps did yeah. right hard, they're hardly hold you responsible for it and plus when I mean, they're realistic enough to know yeah that if they're going to blame the entire country for what happened right. then tourism will dry up yeah. immediately yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely uh, why destroy your bread and butter our fight is with the court our fight is with the government our mm. fight is with the bjp mm-hmm. our fight is not with yeah uh, every indian citizen right uh, right and and that will never be our fight i also want to talk about how like since we are talking about equality i think one of the rights is that you can go to court but uh, is it i'm just asking as a mm-hmm. question does the court have a uh, obligation to listen to you or can they not listen to you I, no they can choose not to but they can they can yeah. choose not to admit your petition yeah. if they feel that your petition doesn't merit consideration 
uh, they are well within their rights oh, to yeah. dismiss your petition at the application stage itself. Just uh, like equality, justice is also an ideal. Right. Is maybe hmm. a b- better way hmm. to put it. Yeah. Because I mean, technically, like three seventy is one case that is hanging. Electoral bonds is also yeah. one more case that is hanging. Uh, there are like Aadhaar was hanging around for a while, so that wasn't hmm. considered. So it also depends on the mood of the. Court, it depends on the mood of the court. It depends on the judge concerned. It depends yeah. on the bench. Look, they can either decide not to admit it, hmm. or they can tell you that it is not sort of worthy of their court hmm. and that you should approach a lower court. So the Supreme Court might tell you this is the jurisdiction of the High Court, or the High Court might tell you this is the the subordinate. Right. Uh, so so there are ways of doing. There are there's a ways around. Yeah. Yeah. Of of making people run. There are, like there are some things that they are not supposed to dismiss, like right. a habeas corpus plea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there, I mean, technically, uh, a court has to take cognizance right. of a habeas corpus plea. Right. But let's say the 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 three seventy petition that we filed, mm. if the petition was without merit, the Supreme Court is within its power mm. to turn around and say that we see no merit in this petition and we will not admit mm-hmm. it. Omar, uh, I, it might sound weird, but what is a habeas corpus petition? it well you're supposed to be physically presented in court to show that you are alive as in show us the corpse right show, show right. us so, the corpse so i mean yeah. it was something that was filed in my case okay. after, i mean when you're detained right uh, a, a habeas corpus plea petition is filed uh, in the court so that you're presented there and shown that you actually exist right, right. and right. that oh. you are you are fine and then okay. you then they move to sort of have you freed and stuff like that right yeah. Yeah. because we were detained under preventive detention laws mm. 105 107 mm. so the natural order of things is that you file a habeas corpus plea which the court has to take but ordinarily i mean it should be something that's done immediately like right. you file it today right. and it should happen tomorrow right. it doesn't always happen that way right so they they will find ways to delay it essentially right. i i want to uh, move to the next page and this is something that i wanted to talk to you about as well the hmm. parliament image hmm. right so what what did you think when you saw this image yeah. i to be honest with you i didn't notice the people were holding it up i yeah. sort of yeah because i mean i remember parliament is only pillars so i just yeah. <laughs> i mentally conditioned to think that these were pillars and i just moved to the text right. you know the pillars of democracy are Well, now this so picture is outdated. Anyway, we have that triangular building. Th- yeah. I see. That's exactly what I said. Thank we you. That triangular uh, validation. <laughs> um, now we have a triangular building. With the, so with the lions of Ashoka on the top. Yeah, on top. Of very of fierce it. looking ones. Right. I think first let's update the Kashmir thing. Then we can do the triangular thing. <laughs> <laughs> Priority list. Uh, I wanted to ask you how your exper- experience was as a member of Parliament. Uh, a, what do you think about Parliament in general? But also. Uh, did you enjoy being a member of parliament? I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, I think I could have made more use of parliament in terms of my own participation, hmm. uh, but I did uh, enjoy uh, the experience. I enjoyed sort of being able to sort of question the government or answer on behalf of the government because I I did both. Yeah. Uh, in the years that I was there, uh, the easy access that you have. Uh, to people in power to get things done. Mm. Uh, you, there's nowhere else that you can walk up to people uh, quite as easily as you can in Parliament. Right. Uh, so, on the whole, no, it was it was, it was a great experience. Then, uh, if if there was uh, first, tell me what do you think uh, is wrong with the Parliament? Right now, right now, or, or nothing just... happened. No, right now, Parliament isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Mm. When was the last time you heard any meaningful debate or discussion in Parliament? Mm. I mean, yes, this government is passing bills, but this government is passing bills without even token uh, debate or discussion, which is why it finds itself in trouble. Mm. I mean, the the sort of agricultural reform bill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they had actually debated and discussed it and been mm. able to explain it properly, yeah. perhaps the the protests wouldn't have taken the shape and size that they did. Absolutely. But you rammed that bill through Parliament. There wasn't even a token discussion, and look what happened to you. Mm. And similar is the case with so many of the other things that yeah. they do. Um, look, Jammu and Kashmir and what happened to J and K yeah. was what all of six hours, seven mm. hours in Parliament, mm. hardly wow. any discussion and all done. And no, no warning also. No Nothing. No, no. Well, I can understand they didn't want to warn because <coughs> they would have had a situation here to deal with. But mm. even once you introduced it, at least six allow a discussion. Is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Allow a discussion. I mean, you're you're doing away with how many decades of of history, mm. uh, sovereign commitment mm. between. The Union of India and the people of Jammu and Kashmir—it mm-hmm. merits more than just a handful of hours. That's absolutely true. But if 
okay so that was current but systematically what is a problem that you see in parliament i don't think parliamentarians have the resources at their disposal to okay. be able to function as effectively right uh, in in terms of of material research that kind of thing look there are some mps who do it themselves mm. they engage people they find researchers they do their homework which is why you find that they make a bigger impact mm. but the general member of parliament who doesn't have the financial wherewithal to do this mm. uh, finds it very difficult to get meaningful content to participate mm. and also uh, the system is sort of designed against smaller parties yeah. smaller groups yeah. which is extremely unfair like yeah. take jammu and kashmir for example we will only ever have now five members of the lok sabha yeah okay my party no matter what it does even if it wins the two seats in jammu which is highly unlikely we will only ever have five mps yeah. so when you start allocating time mm. on the basis of how many mps you have then smaller states like jnk the northeast when they don't go along sikkim. with the congress and yeah. and bjp sikkim arunachal you're incentivizing them to vote only for bjp yeah. or congress yeah. because then they might actually get their mp some time in parliament otherwise yeah. single party a you don't get time and when you get it it's a 3 o'clock in the morning when your own family couldn't be bothered to listen to what you're saying yeah. much less anybody else the, just yeah. to give you an instance so i think uh, also for the audience um so i used to work with uh, mr p d rai who was in sdf uh, in sikkim so i was there for a year and a half and i was working he's a one member party so like just one seat we used to and there are times when we got uh, literally 90 seconds yeah. for a speech wow yeah and at this on the same bill uh, a party like the congress or the bjp would mm. get 40 minutes one and a half hours one and a half hours ridiculous and even then they won't stick to the time limit yeah they'll still chew into your time yeah yeah, yeah i remember yeah. i mean the the nuclear bill debate yeah time was allocated to everybody we had to fight to get our time in the end because parties that get an hour and a half speak for 3 hours 4 hours yeah. so by the time it comes to our occasion the guillotine is dropped and that's it it was only at that time vajpayee saab needed our votes and that's mm -hmm. why we were able to wrangle time to speak mm. otherwise more often than not they couldn't be bothered it's very it's very it gets very irritating also for people who work with smaller parties mm. because i was a legislative aide i was working mm. with mr rai and he also complained all the time about lack of resources etc mm. so he formed his own team again paying from his own pocket, pocket. that is that's another it. that's problem. the point yeah. yeah so he he paid from his own pocket mm. or the party paid for his resources there is now that system also let me but it was so annoying because on on like a bill like a uh, like a gst for example mm. this member is getting like an hour to speak mm. but we have to give our points in like one and a half minutes, minutes. right how is that yeah. even possible they right. get a movie you get a reel that's the, <laughs> yeah that's and basically. then even the way sort of start questions are handled again i mean very yeah. flawed i mean if the government doesn't want to answer the question there are numerous ways in which they can yeah. ensure that the question never comes up yeah. and of course 20 questions get published 20 sort of members prepare yeah. their supplementaries on a good day you'll be lucky if you reach the fifth or the sixth question yeah. if your question is after 10 you'll almost never get yeah. one yeah. so yeah. again unfair and you know, this is a dumb question but uh, is there any provision in the future for the structure of the parliament to change i don't think so they'll just add more members with delimitation yeah. as in when it happens yeah Uh, with the increase in population the number of members will go up you, you right. still only have 24 hours in a day right so, uh, so the smaller parties increases. and the one man parties will find even less time oh. available uh, to themselves yeah. to, to actually raise yeah. issues i think they're planning for i think some 1100 plus mps in 2025 right wow. now we are uh, at 415 oh, wow. oh, sorry yeah so the only debates you can participate in are the ones which no one is interested in yeah yeah so i mean you will be talking to an empty parliament mm. the tv cameras will have been switched off the press galleries will be khali yeah. uh, if you have some presence on social media you might be able to get two three people to watch a reel on instagram yeah. Yeah. but that's about all you'll get <laughs> sounds like the life of an open micer in comedy exactly like yeah. <laughs> you do that every day every now. day and i now relate to this conversation i get it i get what you guys are talking about uh um, i wanted to ask you this very fun question which is right after that and then we will wrap up uh, last question uh, so there is this whole chapter they have given about uh, how we remove inequality mm, this is page midday meal scheme and yeah, stuff page yeah page 11 yeah. right yeah. uh about how inequality is removed through government programs like mm. midday mm. meal or like through specific interventions by 
the government right there's this very interesting question which i wanted to ask you find out about one government scheme in your area what does this scheme do whom is this scheme set up to benefit it's <laughs> a setup i have no idea what schemes are going on <laughs> well i've heard of the smart city scheme okay uh, but i haven't heard of any citizen who's benefited from it I mean, you've heard of the scheme. What's I've heard of the scheme. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I, I mean, I would assume that it's to make the city smarter. Right. Yeah. But I hazard a guess that smart is actually not meant as smart. It's yeah. probably as this government is. Yeah. No, no, I don't think it's meant technologically. Oh, okay. I think it must be an uh, uh, sort of like they like coming up with all these Uran and things like that. Oh, it's like another one. Acronym. Yeah. Huh. So I assume that smart actually means something else because there is nothing smart. <laughs> about what they're doing which is basically taking existing pavements and footpaths and digging them up and relaying them oh. yeah yeah and that's supposed to make the city smarter it's what nothing about ever... traffic management it's nothing about connectivity mm. nothing i mean yeah. it's just it's also dumb. Like, it just just to be completely fair with not not fair but like just to be completely honest about smart cities so for example a city like shrinagar if you have like these smart city things happening here um you can't have a pan india program right which is like you you are giving the same well, no, amount but of you, resources you, i mean the the program is designed in such a way that you choose the projects you want yeah, yeah. to make the city smarter Precisely. but there has to be some threshold now that you apply right i mean like i said digging up a footpath and relaying the same footpath is not making the city any smarter yeah absolutely uh, So, but is there is there like a scheme that when you were chief minister was there a scheme that you were obsessed with No I, I mean one of the areas I focused on was electricity generation Okay uh, because I sincerely believed that, that was one area in which JNK could turn its economy around Right that if we harnessed more of the installed capacity that we have in our rivers mm. and at that time Ladakh was part of JNK mm -hmm. if we were able to sort of extract more solar power from there and sell it in the in the rest of the country mm. that the state would start earning money yeah uh, but then now Ladakh is 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 separate and, yeah. and that's just the way it but is but did that happen like well some of the projects took off okay some uh, of them but then hydroelectric projects have a very long gestation period yeah so it will be a while before we see the benefits of those yeah now that pavement example was actually perfect it sounds like the perfect metaphor where they are digging up a hole for themselves then occupying themselves yeah. with filling it up then yeah. another that's, hole that's that's pretty much what they're doing wow digging yeah. lots of holes and uh to end this uh, chapter and this wonderful discussion yeah. uh, i would like to read out this one last line which is on page 14 uh, challenge of democracy uh wait do you uh, should we have omar read it no no please read um, it i'm yeah. <laughs> i'm done Uh, no country can be described as being completely democratic there are always communities and individuals trying to expand the idea of democracy and push for a greater recognition of equality on existing as well as new issues central to this is the struggle for recognition of all persons as equal and for their dignity to be maintained uh just one final question what is the current challenge you see in democracy right now are we a democracy also question 2 yes we are but maybe not we are a democracy yeah. uh, i mean we have sort of problems within this yeah. democracy it's it's it, like we started with right in the beginning it's a very unequal democracy mm. yeah. but it is a democracy yeah. right. so i mean some of us have more demo democratic rights than others do mm. but what is the problem i think the problem is the weakening of institutions that are supposed to protect uh, this democracy mm. uh, free press mm. uh free courts uh other institutions of of the government that are supposed to be independent of the government the election commission mm. for example yeah uh i mean we've seen a sort of a very gradual but a very real uh, incursion of the government uh, into the autonomy of these institutions which doesn't bode well for democracy right Thank you so much for doing this, Omar. Thank you for coming all the way and, yes. and <laughs> having such meaningful and sort of important conversations <laughs> during your shikara ride. <laughs> uh, is there any message you want to give the twelve-year-olds who are watching this? Maybe seven standards. Yes, just ask questions. Yeah. Uh, not everything you read in the textbook is the gospel truth, and uh, the more questions you ask, uh, the more empowered you will be. So also ask. that advice, same advice for adults who are watching this. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you, Omar. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank, Thank you. you.
वेलकम बैक टू द आई वी एम स्टूडियो इन मुंबई थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग दिस एपिसोड आई होप यू हैड फन आई होप यू डेड एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू द यूट्यूब चैनल दैट यू आर वॉचिंग दिस ऑन प्लीज फॉलो हाउ टू सिटीजन ऑन ऑल ऑडियो प्लेटफॉर्म और गो टू द आई वी एम वेबसाइट वेर यू कैन ऑल्सो लिसन टू आर प्रीवियस सीजन season 1 which was full of comedians this time we are trying to do something different can't promise you that it will be different but hey you saw the first episode so yeah it's going to be different enjoy <laughs>